views whether standard or materialized are very common concept in the database or data warehouse world the main beauty of a view is that it can be used like a table in most situation but unlike a table it can encapsulate very complex calculation and commonly used join for your business case it can also use pretty much any object in your database except for stored procedures so there are many reason we want to use views views can represent a subset of data contained in a table in this example the requirement says never show inactive customer a view can be made accessible to the user while the underlying tables are not directly accessible a clear benefit of security views can act as aggregated tables where the database engine aggregate data like a sum and average and can present the calculated result as a part of the data in this example we have data available in five different tables and a view can join them aggregate them and simplify the multiple table into a single virtual table again a clear benefit of a simplicity views can hide the complexity of data for example a view could appear as order 2020 or order 2021 transparently partitioning the actual underlying table again the benefit is simplicity views can be used to provide aliases on column names to make them more memorable or meaningful a clear benefit of meaning to underlying complex data entities views can provide a stepping stone in a multi level query by also limiting the degree of exposure of a table or a tables to the outer world so it allows abstraction a clear benefit of stepping stone a view is an abstraction layer and it does what any good abstraction layer does the snowflake has built many features around view and it is important for a snowflake data developer to know about them so this chapter is dedicated to answer following questions what secure views and what role does it play how to interact with standard and secure views and their limitations so we will learn how exactly you can understand whether it is secure views standard views or a materialized view how to define and work with recursive view does view work with stream objects how to refresh materialized view or does it happen automatically materialized view can query multiple tables or it has certain limitations secure view can use internal snowflake query optimization or again there is a limitation with secure views so my request is to stick with this video till the end if you want to gain a thorough understanding of snowflake views alongside theory i will also demonstrate everything live using snowflake web ui so welcome back to my channel data engineering simplified and to this real jump start course for snowflake data professional the last 20 episode in this series already covered history to architecture data loading micro partition time travel cloning stream task role and role hierarchy stored procedure user defined function and many more important concept episode 21 is divided into three parts and this is part 3 which will primarily deep dive into standard secure and materialized view and how to interact with this view we will practice everything using snowflake free trial edition and have hands on exercise to cover all the concept listed in this slide so let's start before we move next let me ask this Do you want to have mastery in the Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse? I believe you should be because there are many amazing opportunities available if you are familiar with the Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse system. I have been adding a lot of great content to help the Snowflake community. The response I received from my audience much exceeded my expectation. People are getting certified on their first attempt and scoring nearly 100%. My free content is used by data engineers, data lead, architect and event data managers. You don't need to buy any expensive courses. Check my playlist. It includes almost everything to make you a successful Snowflake data professional. So, if you find something useful in this content, please press the like button. Leave your opinion in the comment section or send me a direct message on Instagram. Here I am in my Snowflake Legacy Web UI. 
I have already created a couple of tables and populated some sample data set. We will create a view using these tables. So let's review our data set. So first table is a customer table. And I can see my customer salutation, first name, last name, customer ID, and many more other fields. Next table is customer address table. And this table captures customer address like street numbers, street name, street type, city, county, state, and zip, and so on. Third is my customer demographic table, and which captures the gender of the customer, marital status, education status, credit ratings, and many more other demographic fields. This is how these three tables looks like. Now let's create our first view. This view applies a very basic join condition, give some meaningful names to the column, concatenate some of those columns and apply some case statement. So let's review our view. So here I use keyword create or replace view followed by the name of the view followed by the as keyword and then my select statement. I can have any kind of complex select statement which will pull the data from one or many table. If you look into this highlighted part, I am using three tables, the customer table, customer address table and customer demographic table and they are being joined on different keys and I am also applying where clauses to filter some of the data on this select part i am concatenating the customer name i am also decoding the customer gender and marital status the date of birth is concatenated and given a proper format the street number street name are concatenated with a comma and then purchase estimate is also concatenated with a dollar sign so this is how my select query looks like i can execute this select query independently by selecting this select query so this is how the result look like. It is a customer name followed by gender, marital status, education status, and many other fields. All the fields are really giving a meaningful name to each of the column. Now, let me create this view. So my view customer view underscore zero one is created successfully. Now I am going to execute this view to validate the output. So I can see I have a total 48 customer available. I can also go to the query ID, click on the query ID. I can click on the profile and this is how the overall query execution looks like. Let's go back to our worksheet. Let's create another view which will primarily use group by clause and aggregation function to aggregate customer count against the credit rating. This view is also operating on three different tables, customer table, customer address table and customer demographic table with the same set of where clauses and I am using a group by on the credit rating which is part of the customer demographic table and here I am using the credit rating and counting all the customers. So let me execute the select query. And I can see the output of this query. It returns four rows which gives the credit rating like low risk, unknown, good and high risk followed by the customer count for each of this credit rating. Now I am going to create this view called customer by credit rating view. My view got created successfully. Now I am going to execute select statement to get the same result. So I got exactly the four rows. So you can write any kind of complex SQL statement by having different kind of clauses and wrap your complexity and access your data through a view without writing such a complex query again and again. Create a secure view. To create a secure view, I just have to specify a keyword called secure and that's it. I am taking the same example of credit rating and the customer count and the select statement looks exactly same. So let's create our first secure view named my secure view 02. So my secure view is created successfully. Now let's see the output of the view using the select statement. So it is generating the same result. Good. 
So what is the difference between secure view and standard view and how that one single keyword makes a difference? To see the difference, I am going to create another view which is a non-secure view with the same construct. So my non-secure view 02 is created successfully. Let's see the output. It is giving the same output, good. So from the SQL construct point of view, there is no major difference except the secure keyword. Secure view does not use any internal snowflake optimization. And to prove that I am rerunning those queries just to make sure that I do not fetch the data from the cache, I have added the order by clause. So first run our non-secure view. It took 450 millisecond and let's see the query profile. When I go to the query profile, I can clearly see the different step performed by Snowflake and how the join operation and filter operations are being applied. Good. Now I am going to execute the secure view again using an order by clause just to make sure that it does not fetch the data from the cache. It also brought the same result. The time it has taken is a 482 millisecond compared to 450 millisecond. When I come to this screen, it says secure view and nothing is actually visible. Even if you see the profile overview, you cannot see if the how much data is being scanned, how the join operations are performed, in which order the join operations and filter operations are performed. Nothing is visible in this way. However, when you go to a standard view, you would be able to see everything. So this is one of the important difference between a secure view versus a standard view. So the key takeaway, unless otherwise you have a strict security requirement, please do not use the secure view. Secure view does not add any value. Rather, if you use secure view without any purpose, it will hamper your performance and you will end up paying more cost because Snowflake does not use internal optimization when secure views are executed. Secure views also play a very important role when it comes to data sharing. When you try to share a view, the view must be a secure view. Otherwise, you are not allowed to share a normal view. Let's see that. From this screen, it is very clear that only secure views are listed when it comes to data sharing. The standard views are not listed in this screen. And this is another important factor when it comes to data sharing and a secure view. If you have not seen my data sharing video, I would request you to go and watch chapter 16, which covers data sharing in detail. We have covered how to create views in Snowflake. Let's quickly review the construct once again. So this is my view. And to create a view, you have to use keyword create or replace secure view followed by the name of the view. Here, secure word is an optional word. If you want to indicate your view as a secure view, then you can use this keyword right before the word view. Next, you will define the list of column. You can specify the column name and you can also add comment to individual column. However, you are not allowed to add any data type right after the name of the column. You can also specify the comment for the overall view and this is how it looks like. Once you have defined the name of the view, whether it is secure, standard, and you have specified the column list and the comment for a view, then your view definition comes. Here, you can have the select statement and finally, you close the SQL definition with a semicolon. There are additional properties which can also be added. However, we have not covered these parameters in this video. For example, you can add field level masking policy as well as tags. You can also have row level access policies for the view. You can add tags. And you can also add copy grant property. We will cover these properties in a separate video and not part of this video. Now we will simulate what happens to the view if the underlying object on which the view is created dropped or altered. So for that, I am going to create a table and 04 is created and five records are inserted. So let's talk about this keyword called force. Some of the database vendor supports this keyword called force. What does it say? 
even if your underlying object does not exist or will be created in future i would allow you to create the view on the top of those tables snowflake allows you to use this keyword however that object must exist let's simulate it so i am creating this view called my view with force this view is built on the top of a table called future table which doesn't even exist let's run this statement and see the result so it ends with an error now i'm going to create a view which is actually on the table 04 which we have just created and here i'm going to use word force so when i use this word force and this table actually exists this statement will go through so my view 04 is created and when i try to let's list this view first so when i click on this text field it shows that the force word is visible here good surprisingly when i use this get ddl command i can see a difference here the force keyword is gone so this is what the difference in get ddl versus show view command now let me create this view once again now let's select from this view so i can see total five rows available in my view i'm using the alter statement i'm adding a column country let's see if this column is added in this table or not so i can see the country column is added and having a null value now let's see what happens when i query this view querying this view ended with an error saying that declared six column but query produces seven column So we have seen how to create a standard view and a secure view. Now it's time to understand how to list and describe those views. To list any object in Snowflake, you can always use show followed by the object type name. Here we can say show views or show terse views. Show views will bring more metadata column and show terse views will bring limited column. Let's run them. So this output the name of the view followed by something called reserved database name schema name who created those views any comment associated with the view and here i can see the entire create or replace view ddl command i can copy it and reuse it and it also indicate whether the view is a secure view or not and the last call whether the view is a materialized view or not so if you have to fetch all those metadata you can run show views command when i run this command it shows me limited number of columns so i can only see the name of the views what kind of view it is whether it is a standard view or a secure view or a materialized view however this kind column does not differentiate whether it is a standard view or a secure view so here we have created my secure view but it is still indicating as a view followed by the context name so this shows just four standard columns what you have to do if you have to list all the views in your existing account for that i can run this command show views in account this brings in the same result but this time my number of rows are so it goes beyond this context and it will try to fetch all the views available within my account which includes information schema which we are going to cover in future chapters now what if you have to list all the views from a specific database or from a specific schema for that you can say show views in database or show views in schema remember i cannot use both these keywords together so let's run this so i got 49 rows it brings exactly the same result what we have seen with the show views the only thing it does it limits the result and search all those views which are available within this database across all the schema and that's why you can also see i have information schema also available here now if i have to search all the views within a specific schema i can say show views in schema followed by the schema name now i see i have only 25 rows in the sense i have 25 views available within this schema good rest of the informations are exactly same now i can also use like keyword 
and narrow down my result. In this example, I am running short terse views like my underscore as percentage. And it brings only four views where the view name start with word my underscore s. Good. I can apply the same thing for more metadata by using show views like command. I got exactly four result. However, this time I can see additional metadata information, which one is secure, which one is not secure, and there is no materialized view. There is one additional feature when we talk about show views, which are not available with other show object command. It's very similar to the like. However, you can write show views in account start with word M. And let me remove this limit part. So I have total seven views in my account, which start with a word M. And all of them belongs to this particular context. So this is how you can list all views under account, under database, under a schema with different the filter criteria like start with or like keyword. Let's say I have to describe a view. In that case, I will use this keyword describe view followed by the name of the view. The output will only list all the column which is returned by this view. So here I can see it has returned two rows. It means that this view is returning total two column as a result. If you pay attention, the result of this view is very similar to the table. However, some of the columns are meaningless and I do not know why Snowflake has given this result. Maybe internally they represent view as a table and that's why they have reused similar structure. So there is no concept of primary key, unique key, check, expression and default value even null. So these columns are not a very meaningful column so do not pay attention to that only thing is that the name of the view the type of the the data type of each of the column from the column list okay and it says column type and followed by the comment so you can specify the comment for each of this column and also if there is a policy associated with this column so only these few columns are important rest of the columns are not at all important when it comes to describe view followed by the view name now, what if I have to extract the entire DDL of a view, which we can also do through the show view command. However, we have an alternate way to get the DDL using the get DDL command. So when I run this command, it shows me the entire DDL and I can copy this DDL and use it for any other purpose. Now, one important thing to remember, secure view does not really use the internal optimization of a Snowflake execution engine. On the other side, if you are not authorized to see the secure views SQL definition, when you run this get DDL command or show view, you won't be able to see actual SQL definition of the view. And we have done this exercise for a user defined function in the previous chapter. So we have learned how to list all the views or a specific view within the account, within the database and within the schema, how to describe a view and how to get the DDL statement of a view. Let's look into the materialized view. It's very easy to create a materialized view in Snowflake. You just have to specify this keyword called materialized and your view become a materialized view. So let's create this materialized view. So my materialized view created successfully. If I use the show command, the flag is materialized will appear true. Another important thing about materialized view and everybody knows about it, it needs a space to store the data based on your select statement. Now, if I have to make a materialized view, a secure view, then I just have to add this keyword before the materialized keyword. So let me create this secure materialized view. So my secure materialized view is also created. Now, what if I just interchange this word and keep the materialized first followed by the secure. Let's see what happens. The creation of view will fail saying that there is a syntax error and unexpected secure because the secure word is not expected after the materialized. It is expected before the materialized word. There are many limitation when we deal with a materialized view and we are going to see a couple of them which are very, very important. You cannot use limit keyword with materialized view and if we try to do that let's see what happens it again says invalid materialized view definition limit clause not allow in the view definition 
If I want to use joins and try to add a lot of tables, it also does not work. And let's see that. So I am creating a simple materialized view, which is using a join query. We have seen this query earlier. So let me create a materialized view. Here it says more than one table reference in the view definition is not valid. So you cannot use having clause and many more other limitations are there with respect to materialized view. So whenever you are going to use materialized view, make sure that materialized view cost you like any other table. Materialized view is having a lot of limitations with respect to limit, having clause, group by and joining multiple tables. Now let's run the show command and see how does it look like. So I can see there are three materialized view and the flag is materialized is. Next, if I want to describe, it works exactly the same way. And it brings all the column list for the view. Now, when I run this get DDL, let's see what result does it bring. So it brings entire DDL statement. You can copy paste and use it for any other purpose. So you can also go to this object explorer and you can go under the table and schema and there is a separate section for the view. Now, if you look into this small icon, the materialized view is having a small M next to that table icon. And if the materialized view is a secure view, then the small lock icon would also appear. So this way you can classify whether you are having a secure view, materialized view or a standard view. However, when I come to my snow site, I do not find any such indicator next to my view. So this is how you can differentiate what you can find on a legacy web UI and what is easy to see on the snow site. So we have seen how to interact with the views using SQL statement. If you are not comfortable with SQL statement, we can still use legacy web UI or snow site to interact with the views. For that, you go to the database tab and then click on a particular database and then click on the view tab. It will list all the views according to your role. And from here, you can click on the view name and all the column which are part of this view, you can also verify the data type. You can also see the comment. However, the policy name and the tag names are missing from this screen. So if you have to understand what all policies are associated with your view, or if there is any tag like PII or confidential associated with your view column list, you have to use the SQL statement and this screen does not show anything. If you have to see the definition of a view, either you can hover in this hyperlink or click on it. When you click on it, it will display the entire SQL text as is, which we have seen using the show view command. Alternatively, you can also access views from the snow site tab. Let's go to the snow site. You can go to a snow site. You can click on a data followed by database tab. And once you click on that, all your database will be listed on the middle panel. Click on the database, click on the schema and click on the views. Click on the views and it will display all the views. If I click on the view name, this will show me the view detail. It's DDL statement followed by the column. The order of the column does not match the view definition. This is ordered alphabetically. And then when you click on the data preview, it will show all the data. So this is how you can interact with the view using snow site. There are a couple of other things. You can drop this view, you can edit the view and you can transfer the ownership. I can click on the drop and drop a view. Let's try that. It will show a pop-up. And this is how I dropped from the web UI. And let's try to edit a view. So if you see in edit is limited to the name of the view or the comment, you can, so other than the name of the view, the comment, you cannot change the view definition. As of now, Snowflake does not support that using an altered statement, you can change the definition of a view. You can change some of the properties, but other than that, nothing else can be done. So let's try that out. I can alter the comment and I can also alter the view name. So this is how you can interact with the view and use the web UI to make the changes. You can also click on the privilege tab. 
I added public role to to select the view. So if you are not comfortable with SQL statement, you can still use these two web UIs to interact with your views and change it. One important thing I would like to show you here. I cannot insert on a view. I cannot delete on a view. I cannot truncate or I cannot update. However, this screen is still showing those privileges. So make sure that even though they are visible here, these operations are not allowed in the view. We have already seen how to build a materialized view. Let's quickly review its SQL construct and its limitations. Here I am creating a materialized view and to indicate whether my view is a materialized view, you have to use the word materialized just before your keyword view. You can also make a materialized view a secure view and this is how the syntax looks like. You can add the column list as we have seen. Make sure that your materialized view should not refer to the many table. It should be limited to a single table. There are many constraints when we build materialized and in this example, the limit clause is not applicable for a materialized view. If you add a limit clause in your materialized view, you will end up with an error saying that invalid materialized view definition, limit clause not allowed in the view definition. Another example, if you try to refer many tables in a materialized view, it will also end up with an error saying that invalid materialized view definition, more than one table reference in the view definition. Self join is also not possible within the materialized view. So materialized views is having a lot of other constraints. Now let's talk about recursive view. Is it possible to create a recursive view in Snowflake? Yes, it is possible. And in this section, we will understand that. Before I create a recursive view, I am going to create a table called node tree, which has three fields. The first column is a node name, followed by node ID and followed by parent node ID. It's a primarily parent child relationship captured in a single table. So my table node tree is created. Now I am going to create handful of record. So if you look into the data set, I have the parent node and parent node is being referred by the child node. And that is how this hierarchy is captured in a two dimension table. So I got six rows inserted. Now let's see the result. So I can see my parent node here and this column is referring to the parent node ID. Good. Now I'm going to create a view and using this recursive identifier, I am indicating that this view is recursive view. What does it mean that the body of the SQL can refer to itself? And in the line number 36, you can see that the name of the view is being referred here. While creating a recursive view, you need to make sure that you have to have this union clause available in the view. So the first statement is selecting the root row and rest of the statement is actually doing an inner join with the view itself and generating rest of the detail recursively. So I am not going to go too deep in a recursive view. Probably we can cover the recursive view in a separate video. So my view is created successfully and now I am going to query the view. So the first three column is nothing but a representation of the table. The last two column indicate how this parent and child rows are related. I can go to the query ID and I can check how my query profile looks like. I can see this is how my query profile looks like. So it is scanning the data. It is applying the filter followed by recursive with clause is being applied. This is how the Snowflake supports the recursive query, which can be an alternate for your common table expression. Recursive qualifier cannot be used with materialized view. That is one of the limitation. So let's quickly recap the SQL construct of a recursive view. So to create a recursive view, you have to use the recursive qualifier and you need to make sure that you have to have a union clause within your view definition. This way you can actually have a join refer the view itself and you can build a recursive and a complex logic which can be a replacement for your common table expression. So let's understand if I have to create a view on the top of temporary table or a transient table or mixed of different kind of table. Can I do that in a snowflake? Let's try that out. For that, I am going to create two type of table. One is temporary table by specifying this temporary qualifier. And then I would use 
transient qualifier to create a transient table. So let's create this two table and insert record. So these two tables are created successfully. Now I'm going to insert one record in each table. Let's see the output. So my temporary table has one record and my transient table has one record. If you do not know what is a temporary table, what is a transient table, what is their limitation, when to use it, I request you to watch this video which explain the different type of table in detail. Now I am going to create a view which executes select statement on the top of temporary table as well as transient table using a union all clause. So this view will bring both the data set together under a single virtual table. Let's query the view and it is serving my purpose. I got two records, one from temporary table, one from transient table. So technically I can create a view by using temporary table or a transient table. There is no limitations given by Snowflake. We know temporary table does not span multiple sessions. And to simulate that, I will switch my screen to a snow site and show you whether I can fetch the same result from this view. So here I am in my snow site screen and let me switch my context first. Now I am going to query this view which we have created in our legacy web UI and it is accessing the temporary table as well as transient table. Now you can see this SQL statement ended with an error and it says that table underscore temp does not exist or not authorized because in this session that temporary table is not accessible. So now you have understood that if you have to create a view on the top of temporary or a transient table, what would be the limitation? Let's understand if views can be built on the top of a stream object. To check if Snowflake views work on a stream, we will create a table and a stream object and perform handful of DML operation on the table. So I created table 08. Let's insert handful of records. So five record inserted. Let's run the select statement and see the data set. So I have total five record in my table. Now let's create a stream object to track the changes in the source table. So my stream object 08 is created successfully. If you have not watched my stream task and end to end ETL series, Please refer to the chapter 17 which covers stream in detail, chapter 18 which covers task and stream together in detail and chapter 19 which covers end to end ETL using stream, task and many other workflows. Since I have not performed any DML operation, I would not have any data set available in my stream object. Let's check that. So my stream object is empty. And since it is an stream object, I can see three additional columns, action, update, and row ID. Now I am going to insert two records, which is record number six and seven. We are going to delete one record, which is record number one. And I am going to update two records, which is ID two and ID three. Let's perform this operation. So two record got inserted. I am updating the city for ID2 and ID3. So the record got changed. So I have performed this DML operation and now let's check our stream object. The stream object should have seven record. If you don't know why there are seven record, then I would recommend you to watch my chapter 17, which covers stream in detail. So I can see I have got total seven record for each update. I will get two record for delete one single record and for insert only single record. So I can see for insert number six and seven, I am getting one one record for number two and number three. I am getting two two records because it will be deleted followed by insert operation and I am getting only one single record for a delete operation. So total seven record. Now I am going to create a view called table 8 CDC view and the definition of the view says select star from the stream object. 
So my view got created successfully. So technically, I can create a view on the top of a stream object. Let's query the view. And it is fetching exactly the seven rows as we have seen for the stream object itself. However, a snowflake does not recommend to create views on the top of a stream object. If I have to only fetch records which got inserted, I can add additional filter criteria like metadata action equals to insert and is update operation equals to false. And let's create this view. Let's run the query. So I can see only two records which indicate my CTC operations are insert. So good. Now, what if I have to only fetch delete operation? What would I do? I can simply say my action is delete and update is false and I can create another view with this select statement. So my view got created successfully. Let's run the query. I can see only one delete operation. This also looks good. Now what if I have to only find the update operation from the stream object? I can simply say my update is true and that's it. And you can see that I have given the order by clause, which is also not recommended by Snowflake. But for a demo purpose, I have given that. So view is created successfully. I am going to run the query on the view. So I can see total four record where ID two has two entries and ID three has two entries. And here I can say the earlier entry was Los Angeles and then updated one was Atlanta and here from Chicago to Atlanta. So this is how I can really wrap this logic. You might be curious, can I create a secure view or a materialized view on the top of the stream? Let's try that out. So here I added this qualifier secure. So this view become a secure view once it is created. So secure view is possible, good. And if I try to create a materialized view by giving the qualifier materialized, let's see what happens. So it ends with an error and it says that more than one table reference in a view definition. This is how the behavior of a materialized view when it is created on the top of a stream. So now you know the limitations and Snowflake does not recommend to create views on the top of a stream object. I have seen earlier that how we can interact with the views and understand how many views are there, how do they look like and many more things. SnowSight allows you to create a dashboard and you can associate the result of a query into this dashboard as a different tiles. We have covered the SnowSight in detail and how to create a dashboard using a filter criteria in earlier chapter. Here is a link and you can go and watch if you haven't watched it yet. So let's see how this view dashboard looks like. This is the dashboard. This gives me total views, standard view, secure views, materialized view, and how much materialized view has costed me with respect to auto refresh. It also says what is the number of views per schema, who all are the owner and different type of views I have within my database and schema. And I can also see whether the views are deleted or it is still active and lot more detail. I can go here and I can click on the filter criteria, select a specific database and say done. And once it is selected, I can click on the apply and it will fetch the data specific to that database. This is how you can really create a nice simple dashboard using SnowSight and summarize all your view statistics around your account or around your database. Let's discuss some of the important points we need to remember while working with standard, secure and materialized view. We have already seen them during our live demo. I would like to revisit once again. Order by clause can be part of view definition, but Snowflake does not recommend it. Views are not dynamic and does not change automatically if underlying sources are modified. So if a view is referring to one or many tables and if those tables are dropped or altered, when you call your views, the view will fail with an error. A schema cannot contain a table or a view with the same name. When you use or replace keyword, it is equivalent to drop view and then create a new view. 
A recursive view must provide a column name list. In standard view, we have seen that column list is not required and based on the select statement, column list are derived automatically. However, in a recursive view, column list is must. When you create a view and then grant privileges on that view to a role, the role can use the view even if the role does not have privileges on the underlying table that the view access. And that's why view are very, very popular and it adds another layer of security on the top of your tables. Internal of secure view are not exposed via query profile. When you see the query profile for a secure view, you do not get any detail on the query profile tab. For secure view, Snowflake does not show how much data is scanned. This is also for the security purpose. Snowflake accepts the force keyword, so you can specify the force keyword. However, Snowflake will still validate whether the underlying objects are accessible as well as they exist or not. Do not query a stream object in the select statement, not recommended by Snowflake. Streams are not designed to serve as a source object for views and materialized view. Creating a materialized view require create materialized view privilege on the schema and select privilege on the base table. When you choose a name for a materialized view, note that a schema cannot contain a table or a view with the same name. Very similar to the standard view. You cannot specify a having clause or an order by clause in materialized view and there are many other limitations with respect to materialized view. A materialized view can query only a single table. Do not start thinking that you can create a materialized view and join many tables. In materialized view, joins including self-join are not supported. A materialized view cannot query another materialized view, a non-materialized view and even a UDF. Very important point for designing your materialized view. A materialized view cannot include UDFs, limit class, windows function, and couple of more things. And this way, we have pretty much covered a stored procedure, user-defined function, and views, which are very, very important component in Snowflake. In the last 21 chapters, we have created different kind of Snowflake objects. Many of them are schema level, and some of them are at account level, like warehouses, roles, and users. Many of them can be described or list using describe or a show command respectively, some of them cannot be seen via legacy web UI or via snow site. But what if you have to know about all these objects under one umbrella? What is the solution? To address this, Snowflake provides a schema called information schema, which house around 25 system defined views as well as table functions. This dictionary or information schema captures extensive metadata information of all objects reside in your database including schema object. So next chapter, chapter 22 will deep dive on information schema. Very very important chapter if you want to have a full control of your snowflake environment. So don't miss this chapter, chapter 22 to gain more knowledge about this metadata and information schema. I hope you have been enjoying this snowflake learning series and if there is anything you liked in this video please press the like button and leave a comment. Now, we will simulate what happens to the view if the underlying object on which the view is created dropped or altered. So for that, I am going to create a table and 04 is created and five records are inserted. So let's talk about this keyword called force. Some of the database vendor supports this keyword called force. What does it say? Even if your underlying object does not exist or will be created in future, I would allow you to create the view on the top of those tables. Snowflake allows you to use this keyword. However, that object must exist. Let's simulate it. So I am creating this view called my view with force. This view is built on the top of a table called future table, which doesn't even exist. Let's run this statement and see the result. So it ends with an error. Now I'm going to create a view, which is actually on the table 04, which we have just created. 
and here I'm going to use word force. So when I use this word force and this table actually exists, this statement will go through. So my view 04 is created and when I try to let's list this view first. So when I click on this text field, it shows that the force word is visible here. Good. Surprisingly, when I use this get DDL command, I can see a difference. Here, the force keyword is gone. So this is what the difference in get DDL versus show view command. Now let me create this view once again. Now let's select from this view. So I can see total five rows available in my view. I'm using the alter statement. I'm adding a column country. Let's see if this column is added in this table or not. So I can see the country column is added and having a null value. Now let's see what happens when I query this view. Querying this view ended with an error saying that declared six column but query produces seven columns.